what we are looking at here is a three-phase distribution transformer and this transformer basically is the last component in the distribution system before we reach the load so we have here at top we have the high voltage and for this one this is a 13.8 kilovolt coming from the primary voltage to the bushing of the high voltage transformer then it will do the voltage step down and what you can see here these four wires the red yellow and blue these are the three phases of the output that will go to the to the houses plus the neuter neutral which is the the white white color so what is inside these transformers what are the different components of the transformers what is the functionality of each component in the transformer to know all of these things please join me in a small video about the construction of the distribution transformer uh, let's have a closer look to one of those uh, three phase transformers we have seen them on the pole and let's see what is really inside those transformers so we'll start with with the name plate here this has the basic information of the transformer so this is for example uh, 45 uh, kva transformer uh, the high voltage is connected as y and the line to line voltage is 27.6 kv and the low voltage side is uh, as you can see here it's uh, also connected as y and it is 600 volt line to line also you have the single phase voltage uh, or the phase voltage for the high voltage is 16 kv and 347 volt for the for the low voltage uh, side and here is the connections of the windings as you can see here is y connections and here is the what we call the tab changer we have a look about the tab changer so we have five positions one two three four five so the middle one you have the hundred percent of the voltage then you go by 2.5 percent five percent up 2.5 five percent below and this is very important for the voltage regulations and here is the estimated amount of the oil is around 145 liter so the nameplate has most of the information that you need about the transformer so the transformer we start from the from the bushings okay where you will have the high voltage so these are the bushings here they are made from ceramic material so you have the high voltage lines coming here to these three uh, bushings and the voltage will go inside the tank as we'll see here through the bushing to the high voltage winding here inside so we have here one two three terminals and then we will have the common this is the common point for the neutral connected to the to the tank so it's it's grounded then you have the transformer inside here uh, this is the core of the transformer okay and we'll talk about the core in other videos in details the types of the core the core material core loss and so on and so forth and then you will have here the and the other side is the side of the low voltage this is the low voltage side of the transformer here and if you go around here the transformer you see the the low voltage bushings and here you have one two three phase the three phase and the the neutral point because as we mentioned that this transformer is basically YY from both the high voltage and from the low voltage and here as you can see here also here on the transformer tank we have the in main information about the power rating 45 kVA and the voltage ratio we said about the tab changer here is the tab changer of the transformer this is the tab changer and here are the five positions that we have about the, 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 the transformer here we have one two three four five this is the tab change of the transformer and the tab changer when we change that from one tab to another tab we have to do it when the transformer is not energized so this is uh, offline tab changer you cannot do any tab change while the transformer is online now what is inside where is the tab changer inside here is the tab changer of the transformer here is the tabs of the transformers different tabs connected here and when you select the switch you basically you are changing the number of the number of tabs now this transformer as you can see there is no oil uh, it's not filled with oil 
uh, this is will make it easy for us to access the different components of the of the transformer. Now it's very crowded here, as you can see. So let's come with me with a small presentation to have a little bit of insight about what is inside the transformer, what is the core, how it looks like, and how's the winding, where we have the high voltage, where we have the low voltage and some other questions about inside the transform. So please come and join me in another small presentation about what is inside the transformer. Hi everyone and welcome to this small presentation that will try to uh, learn a little bit more about the different parts of the distribution transformer. So as you can see here, we can say that the tra distribution transformer has three main categories of components. The first one is the tank the outside tank filled with oil. Now, what is the purpose of this oil? It's basically for cooling and it is an electrical insulation. So it, it, it does two things, electrical insulation. Now, why we need the cooling? Because we will have a voltage, we'll have a current, we'll have the I square R loss in the winding of the transformer. So this will heat up the transformer. So you need to cool it down. So this comes the functionality of this of this oil with the help with the radiators that you see here, these radiators, which will increase the surface area, then you will have a good cooling of the of the transformer. The second thing is that it's an electrical insulation. Now the breakdown voltage, the breakdown voltage for air at a uniform field is equal to 22 kV per centimeter. So for every centimeter to break down this gap, you need 22 kV under, only this is under uniform field. But for oil, for new oil, this value goes up up to 240 kV per centimeter. So it's a huge increase. Now this will allow us to reduce the size of the transformer. The clearances, we don't need to have big space to avoid any flash over. So that's for the tank and for the oil. Then we have something we call the active part, which is basically the winding and the core. And in the coming few slides, we'll talk about them in details. The last thing is the accessories. We have a standard accessories like the bushings, the high voltage bushing here and the low voltage bushings. And we have seen them in the previous, uh, in the previous part of the video, okay? Also, we need the tap changer. And we will have a dedicated uh, video later on talking about the tap changer, their types and why we need them, but it's basically for voltage regulation. Then oil level indicator, for example, if you want to see the level of the oil inside the transformer, you need an indicator. Sometimes we have relays, like over pressure relay. If the pressure inside the transformer goes up, there is a relay will trip the, the circuit uh, breaker. So the most important part in the transformer is the active part, which is basically the winding and, and the core. So let's look to the core types. We have two different types of the core. One is called core type and shell type. And this is for a single phase transformer, okay? So here, for example, this could be the uh, high voltage and this is the low voltage or vice versa. In the shell type, they are on top of each other and I will come to this point later on. Now, a basic difference here between the core type and the shell type of the transformer, of course, this is the core and this is the core, it's very obvious is that in the core type, the winding surrounding the core. In the, in the shell type, the core is surrounding the winding. And this will lead to an advantage and disadvantage for each one. So for the advantage of the shell type over the core type, that the shell type has a better mechanical protection because the core is surrounding the winding. So it, give, it, it gives the, the winding good mechanical support. And this is needed, especially when there is a short circuit inside the winding, uh, the mechanical support will be needed at that, at that stage. But the core type has a better cooling, okay? Because the winding is the one that needs the cooling and it's exposed to the oil more 
more part of the transformer is exposed to oil. Here, the winding is inside the core, so we don't have a good a good cooling inside the transformer. So we have the shield type, we have the core type. The video for the uh, transformer that we have seen in 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 the, the previous one, it was a shield type. It was not a core a core type. The core type is look like this. This is a three phase core type transformer. So here we have we have phase A, phase B, and phase C. And here we can see different things inside inside the active part. This is the core. This is the, your core here. This is the core. Now this is a core type transformer because the winding is surrounding the core. We have three legs because we have a three three phase uh, these are the tabs for the tab changer these are the tabs of the tab the tab changer and the holes you see them here they are ducts this is for the cooling so that the oil can go inside you can see them here as well here so the oil can go inside the winding and circulate for better for better cooling and the most important thing here for the transformer that will decide its life is the insulation paper so here in the active part we have cover we have silicon steel for the core and we have the paper serious paper so the serious paper is the weakest part in the transformer active part and this is what will decide the ins the life of the transformer this is one of the major factors that will decide the transformer life so we try to avoid the overheating because this will lead to the aging of those of those uh, paper insulation. The last question I'd like to answer here, when you look here to the winding, here we have the high voltage, the one, this is are the wires, and the low voltage is inside. So the high voltage is on top of the low voltage, and between them there is some insulation here with cooling to insulate the high voltage from, from the low voltage. The question is, why we don't have them like this this is how we used to see the transformer we used to see the transformer as a core then we have a winding in one side a winding in the other side so the primary and the secondary they are separated so why we have them on top of each other so to explain this let me elaborate more on this schematic so this is my core for a single phase and that will give you the idea for the three phase so when let's say this is the primary and this is the secondary okay so basically you energize the transformer from one side so here is the high voltage you energize it from here then using the hand right rule you will have a flux you have the flux that will go and come here and then it will induce a voltage in the in the secondary so we'll have here your load connected and you will have the voltage induced okay now not the whole flux that we produce will reach here why because we have leakage flux part of the flux will leak into the air yes the air has a much higher reluctance but still it has a different reluctance so part of the flux will leak so not the whole flux we produce here will reach there how to minimize the leakage reactance is by reducing the path that the flux has to go between the primary and the secondary and what is better than having the primary and the secondary on top of each other so you'll have here this is the primary and then we have the the secondary on top of it so the leakage reactance or the flux leakage will be less which will lead to a less leakage reactance in the transformer and less voltage drop and this is something very very important for the voltage regulation of the of the transformer the final question is okay we have here the high voltage on top of the low, low voltage can we do the opposite theoretically yes but for two reasons we prefer this this way the first one is that the core is at ground potential so if you have the high voltage at this side the high voltage will be close to the ground so you need more insulation so it's better to have the low voltage in between the two the second because at the low voltage you will have much high current this is has the current here the current value 
is very high. So for the high voltage side, the current is basically low. So we need to have a conductor that has a much higher cross-section area at the low voltage side. And as a matter of fact, for this, we use complete foil for the turns in the low voltage. So mechanically, the low voltage is way stronger than the high voltage. So it's much easier to have the low voltage and wind on top of it the high voltage rather than having wires and then having this huge or this mechanically strong or this huge amount of cover on top of it. You will destroy, you will deform the high voltage winding. So this is why we prefer it, the high voltage to be wound around the low voltage winding.